<laughs> so we're going to start to make a bulgogi tonight. So first, I'm going to change my camera so you can see clearly. Sorry. So this is a bulgogi meat. Let me see, let's see the you know, ingredients. This is one pint of thin sliced beef sirloin, or, you know, you can use the shaved steak. If you go to Korean market, you can easily get this bulgogi meat, thin sliced one. But if you cannot get this one, you can, you know, um, use a shaved steak instead of, you know, bulgogi meat. And we need the soy sauce, Korean pear juice, minced garlic, finely chopped scallion, sesame oil, honey or agave nectar, and sesame seed toasted and grounded, and the rice wine or red wine or half of onion. So we're gonna start to make a bulgogi first. And uh, before we start to make it, let me see, you can see clearly more. So you see this blood here. So before we start to make it, we need to remove the blood from the meat. The reason we are removed the blood from the meat is actually it contains bad things for your blood circulation and it, tasted, it doesn't taste good. So it's better you take a, Place a paper towel, or if you have a strainer, place it this one in a strainer and uh, remove the blood. But if you don't, place it in a kitchen towel or paper towel and tap it a couple of times and place it in a bowl. So we need to remove the blood first. So, Likewise, when you make a, likewise, when you make a, you know, beef broth, you better to place the beef in cold water at least 30 minutes and then cook it. So it gives you more taste to beef broth and it's clear and clean. <laughs> so if you are in a hurry, just you parboil it and throw away the first one and use your second broth, that's better. So remove, so this, you know, blood first, and then we're going to start to make a seasoning ingredient, marinating sauce. Uh, I forgot to mention it, but the bulgogi was actually originated from Koguryo dynasty. Do you remember I mentioned that when we, you know, miso was made in Koguryo dynasty 3000 years ago, bulgogi also was, you know, originated from Koguryo dynasty 3000 years ago. Actually, curry has 5,000 years of history. <laughs> so Kuguryo started to make it this bulgogi. Bulgogi is literally meaning pul is fire. Gogi means meat. So actually it was meaning meat on, you know, on the fire. And that there was an origin of bulgogi. And they actually marinate the bulgogi with the twinza, those soybean paste sauce that I mentioned earlier. But later, that we started to change the soy sauce. And another name of bulgogi is called the Nobiani, which is originated from Joseon Dynasty. Joseon Dynasty is the first and last name, uh, last dynasty of Korea. And that there was an originate of oh, Nobiani is a thinly sliced meat. And that was originated 600 years ago. So it was, has been changed throughout our history from, 3,000 years ago to recent. So he said, you know, food is keep changing and, the, you know, advanced, developing. <laughs> so, so we are gonna start to make a marinating sauce first. I, we remove the blood and then we're gonna add, this is rice wine. But if you don't have a rice wine, you can substitute with a red wine. This one is good for taking beef smells out. And so we're gonna add this one first and place it on the side. And we're gonna add, uh, 
that the key of a bulgogi is adding this Korean pear. I'm not sure. Have you seen the Korean pear before? Taste it before? No, no one. <laughs> Korean pear is a little bit different from Asian pear. Let me show the video how it is different. <laughs> So it is much bigger than any other pear. And then in Korea, uh, it's there, you know, Korean pear is very crispy, juicy, and sweet. And skin is very thin. And also in Korea, the pears are considered a major healing food for the autumn to winter season in Korea, especially for coughing or cold, because, you know, pear have the quality of a clearing heat moistening and a clear flame from lung. So pear juice is considered helpful for strengthen your lung, prevent a cold and cough, and uh, you know, speed up the healing of a colds and coughing. So in winter time or fall time, if we got the cold, we you know, steam this Korean pear with the um, honey and we take a juice and it's very good for you know, healing your cold or coughing. This is a you know Korean pear farm in South Korea. <laughs> As you know, pear blossom is very beautiful. I love pear blossom. <laughs> and also, in addition, the Korean pear extract makes the meat very tender because you know by decomposing protein and the fat enzyme, it makes the meat taste better and also easier to digest. And of course, it is good for your health as well. And, you know, natural Sweden. <laughs> On the other end, you know, some people using kiwi or pineapple, but, you know, those two does not achieve the same result by, you know, as using the Korean pear extract. So Korean pear is, a, you know, very, they're carefully growing in Korea. If you go to Korean market, I believe one in Jericho or Tixabel in full time, you're going to see the Korean pear. And uh, let me just fast up. They, you know, grow the pear individual wrap like here, starting when they start to, you know, grow, they're going to wrap individually. And they carefully, you know, take care of a Korean pear. So it's tasted really different from a, any other Asian pear. So this is the one that I mentioned. If you got a cold, let me just you know stop it here. If you got cold, you can take a seed out from the pear and then you add the dates or any honey inside and then you stem it and then you take it as a medicine. So in Korea, the basic philosophy of a Korean food is you know food and the medicine share the same origin. So back in you know, our ancestors, still we do, we try to heal the body by eating things first because you know, that makes your body. So I recommend you try to make it this, you know, <laughs> steamed pear with the honey. When you have a cold, it's going to be very good. <laughs> so this is a Korean pear. So we're going to, uh, but these days, you can purchase this uh, Korean pear juice extract. You can easily purchase, you know, <laughs> and uh, you can purchase from Amazon or, you know, some Korean market carry this one. This one, uh, probably in, from the Amazon, you're going to see the pear and bellflower root together, the juice. That's really, really good for your healing, your lung and coughing. So this will be, you know, easier. <laughs> <laughs> to drink it and to cook it. So the package one will be easier, but if you want to use a real one, how we do it, <laughs> we just need to peel off. Peel off the pear. And use a grater or juicer. We're going to use this grater. Use a grater. And we 
the strainer and we're going to just use the this juice only. So you can use a juicer if you want, that's fine. So we're going to add pear juice. But if you have a packaged one, it's going to be easier. But this is really good <laughs> for drinking also. <laughs> So I just added a pear juice and I'm going to mix it. And we're going to start to make uh, our ingredients, marinating sauce, what we need, scallion. I'm going to chop it. Scallion, just use the garlic. And this is the soy sauce. If this is a Korean traditional soy sauce. Uh, when we had our first cooking class, I introduced about the difference in Korean soy sauce, traditional soy sauce and the other soy sauce. I'm gonna mention it later when, when we have a little bit of a time. So we mix it. So just a bit, I need more soy sauce and a little bit of a sweet. You can use a sugar or you can use an agave nectar or you can use a honey. So I'm gonna use agave nectar. And we mix it. And then we need the sesame oil and toasted ground the sesame seed. And I'm gonna add it to here. I'm gonna add the sesame seed and the sesame oil and last. We're gonna mix it. And the sesame oil. The reason we are adding sesame oil and the sesame seed as you know, the beef contains a uh, saturated fat, and these uh, uh, seed, sesame seed, is a plant seed, which contains omega-3, which means unsaturated fat. So by adding unsaturated fat to saturated fat, it prevents your body directly absorb the you know, saturated fat. That's uh, one of the scientific reasons we are, uh, you know, using sesame seed and sesame oil. So if you go to Korean restaurant and if you order uh, Korean barbecue, you're gonna get a you know, side dishes, banchan, a lot of side dishes, and probably you're gonna see the lattice or any other you know, leaf, vegetable on the side. You can wrap it together. That's also, you know, trying to balance the meal. Do you remember Korean meal is a very balanced meal. <laughs> so they're trying to balance the meal uh, by, you know, vegetable and meat. So even for this recipe, we are trying to balance the meat and veggie, plant seed, which is the sesame seed and sesame oil. So that is the key of the Korean food. So, isn't it easy to make it? <laughs> so once you have a, this is actually main dish. We don't eat this one by itself. We eat it together with the, you know, rice. I'm gonna show the, you know, Korean table setting later after, you know, we finish cooking. And as you're gonna see it, this is one of the main dish. Now, uh, but so key of a bulgogi, another key of a bulgogi is a fermentation. Do you remember 70% of a Korean food is fermented, which is rich in probiotics. So this Korean, barbecue. This recipe, this recipe also need a little bit of fermentation. How we do it? We place this one in a room temperature about 30 minutes and then move to the refrigerator and then wait about a, a day in the refrigerator. So once it's fully fermented, you're going to see how it's different. The color is different. So let me show the this one, fresh, let me change my camera. You can see the different. So this is the fresh made one, we just made it. 
and I made this one last night. <laughs> you see the difference in color. This is red and this is brown. Usually, you know, changing the food of color is brought into browning. Browning, the changing of brown in color is a bad things for the, like a, it goes bad or it's a bad things, but not for the meat. <laughs> this is means it fully fermented. It contains, you know, good things and the more flavor It's fully marinated. So you got to wait a day in the refrigerator. And also this marinating sauce, you can use to any other meat, short meat or um, any rib or pork or chicken, you can use to this marinating sauce to any other meat you like. So once you have a fully fermented, we just need to stir fry it. And let me change my camera, sorry. So we just need to add any vegetable you like. Usually onion is good. So how we do it? We take uh, this root part out. And slice along with the line. And then we just need to simply pan fry. And if you want to add any other vegetable, such as a mushroom or carrot, that's fine. So I'm going to add a little bit of a mushroom also. So we just need to stir fry and the temperature will be like a 300, 350 high heat. You don't have to add any cooking oil. Do you remember we added uh, sesame oil? So we're gonna uh, add vegetables together. And my candle so you can see. So you stir kick stir fry. Keep stirring. So this is done. And if you have a, like a leftover purgogi, or if you have more purgogi, you can try with this recipe. I'm gonna share this recipe later. Uh, if you need it, you can email me, I can send the recipe. So I'm gonna type in my email address here. <laughs> so if you need it, just email me, I'm gonna send it. You can try with this uh, purgogi salad. So this is another good, you know, example how you can prove it every day easily. And also you can make a prugogi taco or prugogi burrito. So you can, you know, you use this prugogi recipe to any other meat if you want. And uh, also if you Google, there are a lot of recipe prugogi burger. Um, Almost 10 years ago, one lady in New Jersey, she won the first place, who makes the best burger in the States with the Burgogi burger. And as I mentioned, you know, this marinating sauce is better than, you know, the steak because, you know, by adding beneficial, you know, good marinating sauce to the meat. So it, 
upgrade. You know, it makes the you know meat quality better. Actually, when you cook the steak, for myself, you need to get a good quality of a, you know beef. That's the important things for to make a good steak. But bulgogi, even though you don't have like a such a like a top grade of you know beef, by adding this beneficial you know ingredients, marinating sauce to the you know bulgogi meat, you know you can make a better taste and the healthier way to eat the meat. So because you know when we according to research. When you add the soy sauce and honey or sugar to the meat, and then when you cook it, and when you marinate it with the soy sauce, honey, uh, with the you know meat, it reduces the COP, which means cholesterol oxidants products. So this is a better way to eat the meat. <laughs> so I recommend you try to make it this recipe at home, and the it's. You know, as you can see, it's a very easy to make. And once you have everything, you can, you know, make it easily. So do you have any question? Any question? No? <laughs> okay. So next, uh, I'm going to briefly mention about uh, kimchi. So I'm going to show how to make a cucumber kimchi. And the kim before we, I make a cucumber kimchi, I would like to briefly tell you about the health benefit of a kimchi and the origin of a kimchi. So kimchi is actually, you know, most of scholars agree that, you know, kimchi was originated about 3000 years ago. And uh, kimchi is literally meaning fermented vegetable or it states, you know, salted fermented vegetable. And it, you know, became, you know, called the kimchi about 600 years ago starting, and they was changed the kimchi. And uh, every country has own fermented dish, and the, but the difference lies the method of fermentation. And the Korea fermented food is 100% based on the vegetable. As I mentioned, um, this is the, uh, as I mentioned, Korean kimchi is, you know, 100% vegetarian and the twinjang. Do you remember Korean? Uh, do you remember the Korean, the soybean paste salt? That's also, you know, that's also the fermentation of, you know, vegetable, soybean only. So kimchi is actually uh, key of our diet, but, uh, you know, but kimchi itself is a fermented vegetable and uh, it's different in, uh, you know, other, uh, fermented vegetable, it's a, it's a low temperature, it's low temperature fermentation. And winter time, uh, our ancestor dig the oran under the ground and store the kimchi for several months, even for the several years. And it stays, you know, with a crispy <laughs> and the good quality. How it does it? The, because you know, secret is you know, secret is lies in the temperature. The under the ground, the temperature is about you know, uh, zero Celsius degree, and the, that temperature keeps kimchi very crispy and the produces good probiotics. And so, and the, you know, there are at least thirty three different types of probiotics in in kimchi, but the the how we can you know, take it every day. Uh, you know, even though you take a, you know, probiotic pill, uh, there, is on, on, there are only like a two or three different types of probiotics, but kimchi contains 35, 33 different types of probiotics, and the Korean people eat kimchi almost every day. <laughs> so, but, you know, as you know, but you, for you, you can eat the kimchi every day, but you can try like a, a once a week, <laughs> but the, how we eat it, how you, I recommend you can try with the kimchi salad that I sent you the, you know, the recipe. That's gonna be your first step. You can try the kimchi or you can make your other kimchi like a, eat it like a cucumber kimchi that I showed today, like a, like a salad today. So I'm gonna start it to make a oi kimchi, cucumber kimchi today. So. It's very easy to make it. Let's see the recipe. We just need a Parisian or a cucumber or 
Puchu, it's optional. It's a garlic type, it's a optional. Onion means garlic, sea salt, and the seven cup of water is optional. And seasoning, we need the chili pepper flake, fermented shrimp, or fish sauce means the garlic, and the plum sauce, honey, or sesame seed, that's it. So you can eat it like a salad. This is very easy to make it. So I'm gonna briefly show how we make it this one. So first we need to cucumber. Slice it. Slice in a bowl. And no uh, more cucumber. That's it. And we need to salt it. Do you remember the first step of a kimchi is salting, which is killing the bad bacteria. So you can use the sea salt, but Today, I'm going to use a bamboo roasted salt. This is a Korean traditional salt by purified by heat. How we make it? We put the sea salt in bamboo and the roast uh, uh, at least three times to up to nine times in a very hot temperature, about 1500 Celsius degree. So this is very good for detox and also it has a less sodium and more mineral. <laughs> so also, but if you want to use, uh, you know, salt, any salt, I recommend you use the sea salt instead of a purified one, because it contains more minerals and it has a, you know, less sodium. So we need to salt it first. And we need to wait about 10 minutes. And then while we're waiting, we're going to prepare the seasoning. We need to slice onion. Slice the onion. And this is Mr. Gali. And this is a chili pepper powder. And this is a fish sauce. Or you can use a shrimp sauce, fermented shrimp sauce. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of a sweet, which is a, uh, you can use a sugar or you can use agave nectar. So a little bit of sugar. And we mix it together. So you gotta wait until it's fully salted. It takes about 10 minutes. So while we're waiting, I'm gonna show very short filling on Korean bronzeware. I believe it no one attended. Did you enjoy the video? Oh, as you watch it, this bronzeware is very unique. And uh, um, actually it was originated about 2000 years ago. And it's still mysterious, you know, things, how our ancestors could find that their scientific, you know, method back in you know those days that's a very mysterious and uh, if you want to more learn about the, our uh, culture things you can visit our website and i believe Berlin, you have some leftover hard copy in your library for handing out the patrons to the patrons so you can you know ask a uh, librarian to get a copy of 50 wonders of a korea volume two second volume it has more recipe, a little bit of a recipe, and then it introduced a Korean, you know, scientific girl invention throughout our history. So yes, uh, we, John, I just wanted to jump in and, and uh -huh. confirm that yes, we do have those um, books uh -huh. at at the reference desk. Yes. So, but if you need more copies of any other books from our website, everything is complimentary. So you can email us anytime. We can send the books for free. So. As I mentioned, our ancestor 
invented so many wonderful things to follow our founding philosophy called the Hong Yi Ingan, to live for the benefit of mankind. So following that you know, philosophy, Korea never invaded any other country to throw out its history. So you know, Korea is, Korean people is very peaceful, love peace, you know, love peace. So if you visit our website, you can more learn about the Korean uh, culture and history. So, so my cucumber is ready to wrap it up. <laughs> so let me change my camera. So it's already salted. It's a, just need a 10 minutes while well, I mix it. And remember, we mix, mix the, the seasoning. So it's, it's a cucumber kimchi is a very easy kimchi. You can try, uh, you can try to make it home. <laughs> the kimchi is not the difficult. <laughs> So it's the easiest to give tea you can try. So it's a cucumber kimchi is ready. And I'm gonna share, I'm gonna share one more recipe in your recipe book, which is a kimchi salad. Do you remember kimchi is a side dish, it's not a salad. We don't eat kimchi salad. But um, you know, kimchi is uh, some people need a little bit of time to use to get used to the kimchi flavor. So I call, I think it's a acquired taste for the kimchi. So, but kimchi salad, when you make it this fusion salad, everyone can easily take a kimchi, eat kimchi. So I call it kimchi 101. I never seen any, any you know, <laughs> any of who doesn't like this kimchi salad. You just need the simple things. You need the spring mix, you know, the aged kimchi, not the cabbage kimchi and the apple, and you need the three things for the dressing. Honey, extra virgin olive oil, and balsamic vinegar. That's it. So you put a little bit of kimchi as a topping over your kimchi salad. And slice the apple. Apple is best with the kimchi. You toss it, you add the three things, simply. <laughs> extra virgin olive oil and sweet. Some people add, a, you know, this is actually our own recipe from our <laughs> presentation for, you know, before pandemic, uh, we used to serve a full meal to everyone. And uh, this was our popular dish. <laughs> everyone can have a kimchi easily. So this is, you know, you can get a kimchi in your, in your you know, nearby Korean market, or I sent you a link uh, on your recipe or ingredients link. You can purchase from the website, I, I mean the Amazon, but the, the key of a kimchi is good fermentation. So if you want to purchase from the market, you got to make sure it's fully fermented. How we, you know, hmm, so fully fresh made one, it's a crispy, it's a crispy. And the ones that's fully fermented, it's, a, it's not that like it's crunchy, crispy. So you got to taste, you know, tell the difference. And once it's fully fermented, it produced a good probiotics and vitamin A and C and B. So it needs a little bit of time for make a good fermentation. So if you want to purchase the good quality of the kimchi, make sure you get a you know, fully fermented one. And also kimchi is very good for your health. Um, according to research in South Korea, uh, they tasted a two group. Both group had a Korean diet and the one group had a kimchi, the other group without the kimchi. They compared after a month and the group of it with the kimchi, they lost up to 11 pounds per month at average. And the, their cholesterol level got lowered by 20%. So kimchi is a very good for your diet. And also uh, the chili pepper and the garlic in kimchi is uh, you know, uh, good for your stomach actually for digest. So, uh, I hope you can try a little bit of a kimchi if you can. So, but if you, you know, I mentioned it's taste can be acquired taste. 
but the oyu kimchi is like a salad. And also a kimchi salad is a, I believe it's gonna be good start to have a kimchi. So you can, these days you can see a lot of the recipe how people use the kimchi. So uh, do you remember I mentioned you can use the, you know, bulgogi marinating sauce when you make a burger and then you, you can add uh, like a kimchi to it as a topping. So that's another way of uh, eating kimchi. That's going to be good, you know, try if you want. <laughs> so, and the, we prepared Korean table, one meal table setting with our bronzeware tonight. And I'm gonna show what we prepared tonight. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see clearly. This is the rice, and this is a seaweed soup, and this is a bulgogi that we cooked tonight, kimchi salad that I just made it. <laughs> and it, this is a pan fried, uh, um, you don't eat, this one is a wild sesame leaf and the, with the fillet of a fish. And this is a watercress, namul, and this is a napa cabbage kimchi. So this is a one table setting uh, for one person with a pangja bronzeware. <laughs> So I hope you can try to make a prubogi. Prubogi is not that hard to make in. Also, you, I hope you can try to make a kimchi salad. So if you have a prubogi and the rice and the kimchi salad, that's gonna be small Korean meal. You can try to make it home. So do you have any question? Any questions, anybody? I don't see, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> so, nope, I don't, uh, I don't see any <laughs> you, um You can unmute yourself um, if you would like to speak here at the end here. If you have any uh, questions. I, I have a question. Uh, can you buy that, um, I, I don't know what it's called, that bronzeware, that bronze Pangja, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, we brought some Korea uh, to introduce this one. So if you want to purchase, you can email me, then I can send some information. We have a, some, not a lot, but we have, you know, some Pangja bronzeware. I can send you information if you want. So you see my email address there. So yes, it, thank you. Yes, it, and actually, this bronzeware is it uh, in before the Japanese occupation. Um, this bronzeware, every household has one set. Was it like a family to family? It you know it stays forever. It unbreakable. <laughs> but you know during the Japanese occupation, they took all the metals to make a uh, weapons. <laughs> so that tradition actually was gone. <laughs> Well, the and video was interesting. It it made me feel like I need some of that some of 